I think NFT projects uh, are, um, are a great tool of, 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 yeah, of storytelling and expression and I think possibilities. Hi everyone, it's Joanne Salimi yet once again on another episode of New Forum and we're always excited and honored to bring you inspiring guests on our podcast. And on today's episode we have Domingo, a graphic DJ in Valletta Studio Lab. He creates, builds and designs opportunities in the Web3 space, art direction and branding for DAOs and companies such as The Fabricant, Jump, Radar, Plant Gang, 2+, CoinWise, CoinDesk, Creating the Future. And as always, we're powered by Newcoin Foundation, focused on fostering the expansion of decentralized social applications, also known as Social 3.0, by forming an ecosystem and a community of visionaries, creators, and investors to spark conversations on the topics of crypto, the metaverse, NFT, and everything Web3. And on this episode, we'll be chatting with Domingo about experimental aesthetics, the importance of community building in Web3, why DAOs matter and how they impact NFTs, and if the digital transformation of the fashion industry has a future. And finally, we're going to touch on a very important subject, mental fitness and what it means in the Web3 culture. Hey, Domingo, thanks for joining us again. Thank you for the invitation and I'm really excited to be part of this space. Amazing. Uh, so, you know, you create amazing, colorful, vibrant visuals for Web3 people. How did this journey begin for you and what are some of your influences and inspirations? Mm, I think uh, all of our journeys to start like really early when we were uh, later, little. So I, I have the fortune to have um, parents who are very into art and music. And my, my other friends had like this little collection of uh, children books uh, when they were growing up and they were very into children context and, and stuff around them like toys and everything. But I had <laughs> toys also, but um, I think the most interesting part was the habits that my uh, parents had with us because I have a, uh, an older sister and a, um, and a brother. And they always sit with us with art books and they put music and they show us like uh, pictures of different type of artists from the Renaissance, from the Gothic period, from... Uh, I don't know, modern art. I really liked modern art because um, I really felt the connection between, oh, you could do comics and showcase them <laughs> in museums. Like, uh, for example, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, that the, he did op art and based on comic book strips. And I really liked that. Um, and also sculpture. I really liked uh, sculpture, how the stone uh, or the marble became like human figure. And at the same time, they were putting records of, I don't know, um, disco, funk, uh, and 60s uh, classical music or orchestrated music. And all that mixture of ideas and possibilities because when you're growing up, uh, I think uh, it's be, uh, a very narrow path because sometimes your father, your parents wants you to be this type of uh, person or this type of uh, behavior because that's what that's how the your your family uh, behaves in in the social context. But my fathers were uh, every um, whatever you do, just mix it with music and art. And always understand uh, what is your background. So I am very uh, thankful for, for that because right now, everything that surrounds me around uh, cuisine, around uh, traveling, around uh, social interactions, my context, I live, in, I live in Colombia and everything is so colorful. I have the right and the, the attitude to put all those things into my work. 
So we're uh, very uh, festive <laughs> people. We live in a, in a part of the world that every single day, uh, not today, it's, it's kind of grayish because it's raining, but every single day it's like the sun like blasting <laughs> all their lights and everything looks so real. Uh, and even the food, the food tastes like real, 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 real food. Not like the, the mango is yellow, but it's so plain, or bland or, or something. It, everything tastes so good. So I try to, to put all those sensations, all those uh, characteristics of my context into my work. And maybe when you see it in a different context, you'll see, oh, Domingo is so loud with colors and vibrant textures. But that's my, my, my real life. That's what is happening every single day. So, <laughs> Wow, that's quite incredible. And I, I would say that, uh, Domingo, you inspired me today because I'm all colorful and kind yes. of rep representing um, the African continent, um, I think Ghana specifically. Uh, but yeah, it reminds me of that same environment, which is very vibrant, very colorful, and it's also really bright in this uh, in, in in this in the in the in the country. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I understand how these you know you grow up seeing you grow up seeing all these things, the people, the environment, the culture, the space. It's like so organic, right? It becomes a part of you. And so it's really great that you are incorporating that in your work. I think that's really amazing and it makes it like original. I know that um, experimental aesthetic, which is like a field of psychology founded by Gustav Theodor in the 19th uh, century. I think others call it the science of art. How and why do you apply this concept in your design process? Okay, um, I think I landed in, the, in that concept like really late in my life to understand that that was I was doing because sometimes you don't know what you are creating the things that uh, that you do but eventually you'll land uh, someone who just wrote uh, a manifesto or studies around how people uh, understand their context and when they try to translate it into visuals or uh, design stuff, they, they became like that. That's a result of uh, maybe, for example, I'm going to say a, a, a quick example around your dress. In Ghana, maybe there's a, around some uh, type of um, relationship with nature, with food, with uh, what type of things the earth brings to that community through centuries. And when you st start accumulating that into uh, what are the relationships with objects, with uh, their daily lives around, I don't know, cuisine or wardrobe or fabrics and etc. 100 years in the future, that will be like, the, oh, this is the thing that we used to do. So that maybe is part of the, our identity. So let's embrace it and let's call it, that's us. Okay, yes, that's our representation because that's a mixture of a lot of stuff that maybe we don't know for sure what is the real meaning behind it, but uh, it's the accumulation of a lot of generations through thinking about how we look and why we look like that. So for me, the case was around um, especially why I like to do things organically, why, for example, my uh, typography approach tends to be very not so typographic perfect because, you know, typography is like you need to be uh, very legible, very understandable for people, but not in my case because I like to be like to express a lot around those shapes and that ends with a, a lot of um, creativity or craziness, you, you might say, around it because all those references came from how the music is loud or uh, the music uh, can change around a, a song. Also the colors, how they behave or how to reflect in real life in my context. And also uh, a lot of culture or niche that have been part around my, uh, my life, such as, I don't know, I like um, anime or I like comics or I like uh, skateboard culture or I like graffiti and put all those elements into, I don't know, a stew 
and let it <laughs> and let it cook for for a, for a couple of times and the result is like a mixture of, of a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas around what is real life or what is uh, what is our aesthetics should look like and that's why my uh, my approach it's experimental because I try to mix a lot of niche thoughts and cultures together to land into a different type of expression around each artwork or each design, knowing that uh, maybe sometimes uh, design should be like very global, very standard for the understanding of the people. But in my case, that's not how you should look at it because you're losing a lot of identity in the process when you try to um, give everyone like the right to understand or to read you. Maybe behind those expressions or those weird behaviors around aesthetics, you can find more or, or they say more around uh, who's the creator or who's the community that wants to uh, have those graphics or those visuals to express an idea or a project. You said it right, like there, there's like a building of niche communities, I would say, around certain topics and people find themselves in these niches. And I'm wondering, how do you perceive then the Web3 community or the Web3 space? Like what is your uh, initial thought on it? And why do you think uh, Web3 community building is important right now, like building the Web3 culture? Okay, with that, that, that reminds me like an, an example when I started doing graffiti. And it was kind of cool because I I met uh, a group of really into classic, like the, the basics of hip hop culture that some guys here in Medellin and I I like to do break dance and they started to teach me and the moves and they invite me to go to to do graffiti with them. But I saw the, the, the graffiti uh, context and mindset that they have, they were so American, like very square to you just uh, you just only use spray cans. If you use uh, maybe a paint, a brush stroke, or uh, that's not graffiti, that's street art. And I was like, but we are painting. <laughs> we are doing paints on the streets, on walls, and, and they know well, the pure form of graffiti should be done with spray cans. And, um, okay, okay, right. <laughs> And when you understand that a lot of niche communities have this mindset of closeness because they thought that that's the way they should be and set the, the, the basic standards for other people in the future to start building on top of, uh, of your projects and ideas, they miss the, the, the really fun part of being uh, flexible and organic within the context or the technology right now with, with Web3. So for me, it's important to start building with them, showing that, hey, we could have another uh, branch to start talking with other type of projects or uh, bringing other type of ideas or realities into this, because it's the opportunity to start building something that is not closed, like what happened before. Uh, and we've been living uh, like in a, in a simulation, if you could, can call that, of Web2 that just a bunch of people determines what it's the internet today. And it's really difficult to build, build different kind of uh, approaches into that because you're used to that internet nowadays. It's like social media and video streaming and maybe gaming, and that's it. And that's it because those guys uh, decided to, that's the internet and that's how we are going to um, show the people how to behave, how to navigate it, and how to produce content for it, because it's, it's a closed environment. But right now, we have the opportunity to start uh, building something meaningful, something uh, together in a community, and a big community of curious people and, and different type of thinkers. The idea is not to bring, again, that closed mindset or the near sight uh, vision around what we could create with this. So uh, in my case, that's one of the most important things about web spaces to um, associate with all the type of uh, thinking, ideas, persons, 
uh, and even aesthetics. And that's why I like to do things in a weird way because I, I like to surprise people what what type of uh, product or, or or designs they could get if they just open their mind just a little, knowing that we are in a global community of builders and thinkers. And now is the, the time to, I don't know, make mistakes, being crazy, being loud, being different. Um, thinking about community building, would you agree that NFT projects are the perfect intersection between storytelling and community building? Like, what do you think about these NFT projects? I think NFT projects um, are, um, are a great tool of, 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 yeah, of storytelling and expression and I think possibilities. Think as an NFT, I, I was discussing this yesterday with, with a friend, like explaining him NFT world because he was really curious about oh you work we work with blockchain project uh, how is that uh, I know everything went to to zero and I'm I'm worried about you and I just said no don't don't worry I'm fine I'm doing fine so don't worry for me NFTs is like a key to a story with a lot of chapters and in those chapters there could be just one writer or one creator and in other chapters there could be like 700 creators thinking around what what we are going to open with this key so nfts open the 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 chance to create projects or startups or companies or brands without like a strict narrative of where are we going to go in the future around our project for example if i start fashion brand and if i release it as an nft maybe in five years i could be like a, a car manufacturer just because thanks to those nfts and thanks to the community who support me supported me through those nfts they have the right the boat and the voice around okay uh, your brand looks good but maybe we should put those graphics or put those uh, ideas around garments into bicycles because we can because that's the possibilities around an nft project like that the freedom of of giving um, people vote and proposals and i think that's the most beautiful part of this is that you could see the organic growing and, the, and that expansion around an idea because like in the old days if you found like a fashion brand i don't know why you should like put this uh this mindset of closeness that in 20 years from the uh, from now to the future we still going to be a fashion brand why you should well with your project with your with your heart with your soul you need to be like so close around where you could do it and maybe with the nfts there's a possibility because you're bringing a lot of people into your project a lot of opinions a lot of ideas context everything and that should be fun around uh, creation of uh, ideas and projects. We, we know what, what a DAO is, but just for the community members who might not know or the listeners who might not know, if you could describe what a DAO is and why do you think maybe DAOs matter and how does it benefit or impact NFTs? Okay, so I, I always like to start explaining a DAO uh, okay. based on a meme uh, I saw once. That is this uh, anime meme that someone is showing like a butterfly and is, he's asking like, uh, is this something like really ironic? So is this meme and the caption is like um, the butterfly is like a Discord, a Discord group. And the question is like, is this a DAO? Because <laughs> like in, in Discord, everything revolves around Web3 and everything. So when I ask them, oh, I'm part of a DAO. Oh, you mean a Discord group? No, 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 that's not, that's not the case. A DAO is not a Discord group. Yeah, full of people talking like 24 seven, discussing things around uh, whatever they want, but that's not the case. I think DAOs, is the, the proper way to build a project because everyone has like the same interest around creating successful projects, listening to the, or, or at least hearing the ideas and thoughts 
of the people that have the majority of both inside them. So it's not like this pyramid shape that we were uh, used to in the, um, in the traditional way that there's a CEO or there's some stakeholders that decides everything around a bunch of people that are the creators. But here we have the possibilities of uh, being more um, horizontal in that structure that everyone in that organization have the same power or the same voting uh, uh, around decisions around a project. So uh, I think that the easiest way to explain a DAO is like the startups 2.0 or 3.0 in this case, <clears throat> that you know that you're, you're building a project with a lot of people, but the hierarchy is different because you have the same power as the creators, as the founders in, in this case. And you're just looking to build something more meaningful and not just be so just an employee or, or just um, a freelancer for a project be because you're part of the project. Uh, if you leave the project, maybe that DAO wouldn't function as well as the, the, the ideas you're giving. And I think also DAOs gives you the freedom of creating companies in not such um, a strict or square way, just like we did before. Like uh, we had a CEO or we have our commercial representatives and we have the, the employees or that. Uh, a DAO could be like three people, a group of three people just discussing things around, I don't know, uh, biology. Or that same group could be like a thousand people discussing things around biology, but everyone has the same uh, right to vote and, and decision. And that's really interesting to be part of um, this type of projects right now, because it opens your mind around your, your profession and the way you, you relate with your clients and with your um, future prospects. Because when you understand like that mindset of working in a DAO, you start thinking like, oh, I really like that because I can open to the whole project and not just one person that represents it. Really interesting. I I'm wondering, are you part of any DAOs right now? Let me open like my Discord to remember because there's a lot. Uh, of so you're like part of a lot of DAOs. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it, it's. It's fun. I really like those. So I'm part of Jump. Jump is into marketing and, and advertising. And I really love Jump because there's a lot of people in there that brings value from a Web 2 or Web 1 um, communities or environment because they are marketing people. They are um, managing social media relationships and communications and they they enter jump because they are looking for a different way of doing their work, but more into communities, into, into, into needs. And it's really exciting. So I'm part of jump. I'm part of protein that is similar to, to jump in this way that they work in the intersection of advertising and design and stuff. I'm also part of Radar. I'm also part of Plan Gang, uh, Two Plus, um, the Farik and DAO, uh, Digital Axe. Um, let me check another DAO. Oh, uh, uh, Alana, the Web3 Girl um, uh, project that uh, is a project run by Stella Achenbach. She's a fashion designer. Uh, I'm part of Alterage. Alterage. Uh, I always thought that. Alter Rush sounds better. <laughs> and also of, uh, of a project called Creative Friends that it's made by um, Orlando Pedro, who's, who's a friend, he's in, in Amsterdam, and um, Herman Gonzalez, he's a uh, Colombian illustrator, and I'm part also of that project. And maybe I also forgot to mention one or two and I apologize, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> my, my, my day started like trying to catch up in all the, those conversations, uh, trying to see, oh, I, I almost forgot to mention friends with benefits. <laughs>
Sorry, friends. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of things to do in a creative way, in a more flexible uh, way. So that's why I'm part of a, a lot of DAOs because I, I know that I could bring value to them. And uh, that, that value could be colorful graphics or weird aesthetics, or at least being part of that conversation. So when you have the opportunity for free, I, I think that's the, the important part to, to understand. You could join a DAO for free and to start sharing with people around the world that are looking at the same uh, direction like you, the same interested, and they try to build something interesting in this space for free. And why you, why you want to lose that opportunity now? Because we don't know for sure what happens like uh, five years from now that maybe those DAOs became like big companies and it's difficult to enter those spaces to just talk and to share your voice and to understand uh, your views around web three or technology or, or web six in that in that in that sense well domingo i mean it's it i'm glad you didn't forget friends with benefit because i'm sure your friends there would <laughs> i'm also wondering how are you managing all this how are you managing your own projects and keeping up with all these DAOs? and i think that that like leads me to my next sort of question about mental fitness you know <laughs> uh, how because it's sort of it, it, it's it's a big topic well I think it should be a big topic in web3 culture and so I want to like hear your thoughts on that and I will also uh, share a tweet by um, Louis from two plus Dow and um, he says here imagine a world where you think uh, clearly and make decisions confidently prioritize rely reliably, organize efficiently, execute on what you commit to, can't burn out, learn faster. Welcome to mental fitness, know yourself, train your brain, build your daily OS. So I, I mean, <laughs> this definitely would have been, in, I guess, in this uh, perfect world, kind of. Um, but how do you personally um, manage all this? And what do you think about this tweet from Louis? Okay, first of all, I love Louis. He's like uh, an amazing person. And, and I believe he, uh, he with uh, two plus and a wonderful community that is creating that, that is building that DAO are going to make history around Web3 because they're not just a group of people that decided to start talking around mental fitness or mental health in the web three space, but everyone has like a great reputation around projects because you could see uh, people of super rare or people of seed club of people of um, uh, forefront or protein also. And you know, those projects are quite demanding because they are big right now. They have a lot of projects. They have a lot of investment around and you know they are really in really deep into what a web3 project should look like so when you start looking at okay we're just building this from scratch we're just starting uh this movement we need to focus on building on on the right values and the right way as a human being to succeed in web3 without losing your soul or your mind or your health or your uh, relationships because sometimes when you approach for example blockchain or, or bitcoin or ethereum there's a lot of uh, i don't know hosting hustling culture and you need to be there like 24 7 is trading and there's a lot of stress involved and that shouldn't be the case and I think one of the most important parts, in my in my opinion, around this uh, tweet is the part of can't burn out and know yourself. Can't burn out because, yeah, we have like this 
pandemic, not the COVID, but around burnout in your uh, work environment, burnout around relationships, burnout around your health in, in general. You need to understand that you need you don't have to die or trying to to be at the at the top or at the limit of your uh, of your abilities or capabilities for doing just one task or or a work or or to relate uh, or to talk with your, your partner or your coworker. You don't need to 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 put a lot of uh, of your soul or your energy into those type of actions because eventually you will you couldn't handle that in the future and know yourself for, for me it's i think one of the most important uh, part of 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 this uh, of this suite because when you really know yourself you know what type of decisions or what type of projects or what type of stuff you, of stuff you want to be involved with and what that uh, involvement or that participation or that decision would you need to have to really work and to be uh, happy with it? For example, I know that I'm part of a lot of DAOs and I'm doing a lot of uh, things for them, but I know so. I also know that I need to eat well, I need to rest well, I need to sleep well, I need to go to the gym or to go to run with my pets because training myself like into be a healthy person i know that i could handle all this kind of uh, work and stress quote unquote because when you are participating in this kind of projects and you know i'm giving you like a more healthy mindset into design work into advertising work into marketing work you you wouldn't burn out because you're knowing how to behave and, uh, and what are the, the process behind it. So, um, for example, we, as a creatives, uh, our tool is our computers or our, our iPads or, or whatever. Uh, and we are sit like eight to seven hours a day, just sitting in a chair, just working. And I really like to think you need to train to your body to be strong enough to support your weight into the chair, and 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 in the end of the uh, of your work hours, you still have energy to do things. So I can say I sleep at least eight to ten hours. Even I, <laughs> even I'm part of all these DAOs and I'm doing digital fashion, and I also run my design studio. But I try to sleep because if I don't sleep, I cannot handle anything. In a, I found if I don't eat well, I cannot handle anything. And that's part of that mental fitness is to condition your your ideas, your mindset into you need to be healthy, you need to be uh, like uh, real healthy and well prepared, professional and human being for um, for being part of those DAOs and all those projects. Before we wrap up, we're going to go to the fashion side of things. I feel like we need to be kind to the digital fashion uh, a bit in Web3. So um, I'm wondering, like, the digital transformation of, of the fashion industry, right? Is it, do you think, is it really the future or just a trend that has an expiry date? And um, do you think that uh, digital fashion can replace fast fashion? And if you could share a few thoughts on that. I think that's a, that, that's a big question, yes. especially <laughs> with the with the last one, <laughs> with the last part. For example, I'm a graphic designer, and I got really curious around fashion because I I like brands and I like how fashion could be part of the identity of a niche. I really like sneakers too. So, for example, if you see this history of Nike when Jordan releases uh, its first model it doesn't happen nothing because it's a basketball shoe but when hip-hop culture embrace it as one of the of their beacons around culture that when the, the the story around fashion or sneakers became really interesting or for example when 
Rolex uh, releases some of their watches and that's it. They just gives you the hour and it's uh, some prestige or status around it. But when Paul Newman uh, makes that movie in the, I think it's 70s, and he's wearing one of those watches, that's when the, 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 the interesting part of the culture around an object starts. And that's why I really like to jump into fashion, but you know fashion is complicated because if you don't study it, if you don't, uh, if you don't have connections inside the fashion world, you always feel like an outsider. You're just a consumer. Yeah, because you're not part of this metaverse, like this proto metaverse that is the fashion world that I, I feel like you're uh, they are closed doors. They are just like this uh, huge, ca huge castle that you cannot enter if you're not part of this community. And with digital fashion, the keys are free. They are open doors. And I, I think that's uh, one of the reasons I decided to enter because I felt as a part of an active community of people that are collectors that are, are really into uh, the likes of uh, what the fashion industry of the cultural part of fashion industry offers you. Uh, that's why I decided to jump and to bring my colorful, weird, strange aesthetics into that. For example, uh, my first steps into digital fashion uh, was thanks to the fabricant and known origin because they released uh, a challenge, a contest with uh, with a brand Adidas uh, and, and the foundation of the uh, of, of Carly Claus, the model. And they decided to to do a contest to for the creatives who wanted to participate. And they sent us a model of a jacket of their collection. And okay, I did my thing. I did my colorful weird thing. And when they announced the winners, I was one of the, <laughs> the, the, the winners of the, of the challenge. And when I started looking at the other participants, the other winners uh, of the design challenge, I felt like, oh, I'm not part of this space because I made an artwork, not a fashion garment, not a fashion composition. <clears throat> and it was kind of interesting because I saw the opportunity of Oh, you could if you're if you're different here, you also have a voice. You also have like uh, you're taking into consideration because your way to approach fashion is really different, and the expression around it, uh, around how you uh, model the garment or create the composition, could add value more into the expressiveness and art part of what is fashion. So I started to grow my relationship with the fabricant, and I think I really have uh, really close friends there, like uh, Susa, like Amber, and even Kerry, one of the co-founders that really liked the way I approach fashion. So they invite me to, to be part of the project and also uh, in digital acts and other type of projects such as Artifact that from the beginning I was there because I like sneakers and, you know, I could create digital sneakers. So there you go. <laughs> uh, you can start uh, creating with them. And they also were really nice with my my way to approach aesthetics. And, and I think that was uh, my first step into digital fashion. Right now, I'm, uh, I have like this lot of friends in DAOs of digital fashion that I, I want to um, add value to through uh, graphic design for their brands or for their projects, because that's one of the, uh, I think, weakest parts around fashion is when you are very into, into creating garments in real life or digital or, or, or really artisanal, you're missing the part of brand. And sometimes brands, are the value that a lot of people perceive around fashion. And when you don't have a powerful brand, maybe you lose your message or you lose your pieces around 
fabrics, but if you kind of put them in a in the real world, in the outside, without a proper, I don't know, logo, communications, uh, editor, editorial layouts, uh, maybe you'll get lost uh, around the noise of other type of projects. And that's why I really like to be part of, the, of digital fashion, because as a consumer and, I, uh, and as a fan of that movement, I can really uh, bring a lot of value and to start mixing uh, and learning a lot of technologies and stuff together. You, you really nailed it with what you just said, like that you're, you're going in there early to learn everything and to you know, build your skills and to explore the space. And I think that in the future, it's going to be so much better than what we think it is now and what we see. Like there's so much more to unlock, like augmented reality, like with VR every, and everything. And I think brands will also be more and more adaptive. I mean, they already are very... Um, broadening their horizons into digital yeah. fashion, but, but still like the mass adoption is not there, but you know, once it is, or so everybody will not think it away, I think. So it's just yeah. like an, it's just like another way of expressing fashion. Like it's not the same. You cannot compare it to like real life clothes. Like it's, it's a different medium, but it's an extent for me, at least it's an extension. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, excited to see like the designs and the ideas that people are coming up with and i'm really happy that we are we are doing this or like that we are trying new ways of expanding our culture our you know taste and just try it out like yeah it's really really valuable and um yeah i think we had such an amazing conversation with you domingo like you're such an inspiring vibrant person and I'm wondering where our audience can find you on your social media platforms to check out your work and check out yourself to follow you. Okay. Um, I think you can find me on Instagram, like Belita Gram, like the name of my studio, Belita, but G-R-A-M at the end of the name. That's my uh, studio profile, me and my wife, because I, I work with, with her uh, we don't really like that much Instagram because, you know, Instagram, <laughs> but you need to be there. So you'll see that uh, more of a corporate because our corporate is also full of colors and weird <laughs> aesthetics. So you could find our, our design projects there. You can find me on Twitter our, uh, as Gleismag, but it's difficult to pronounce it and to explain it. But if you look for Domingo Beta, in on twitter you'll find me and yeah i have uh, two open sea accounts with the same domingo beta and i think uh, you'll find me better on twitter and then you start seeing the, the links are around me and i just wanted to answer the last question of the the part of the digital fashion that if it is going to end fast fashion if digital fashion is going to, I don't know, override or ends uh, fast fashion, I think that's not the question. It's not about ending stuff. It's about, it's about more getting conscious around consumption. And if, you, if digital fashion can help people to understand that for your digital persona or for your digital being that is constantly on Instagram, that is constantly or on TikTok or the Snapchat, that is your, your communication channel into the world can be substituted, your garments that you use for your uh, streamings, for your presentations into the digital world and not digital world because you present yourself in Instagram and people are going to uh, meet you later or get to know in real life later. If you understand that you don't need to buy fast fashion items just to wear them on a digital space, that change of conscious is going to help a lot of, uh, of people that think that you need to constantly buy uh, fashion items just to look good on digital. So when you understand that, hey, that dress that you like or that jacket that you like or maybe those shoes 
could be an AR uh, experience, an augmented reality experience, or maybe a virtual reality experience with the with your uh, with your garments. You could I don't know buy ten wear them like in a different in a in, in a really special way, and that's saving a lot of um, fabrics, uh, water consumption, uh, even the transportation of the item from one point of the world to other to other part just because you you would like to look good on instagram or on tiktok or the snapchat or on social media so i think digital fashion uh could help a lot to get a change of conscience or mindset around fashion in general because sometimes you you only purchase things to flex or to showcase, oh, this is my new item, or this is my new stuff. And that could be, I don't know, uh, a filter. And that's it. And you're getting the same reputation and the same uh, engagement around your account, if you want to show them, but not in the case that you need to purchase something because the process behind it is so contaminating and difficult to for the world nowadays. The more I think shoppers or shopper, shopaholics see people, you know, in more digital clothes and it looking as realistic as possible, I think that they're probably going to be, that's going to be very attractive to them, you know, as even people who are not in Web3 yet, if like, say I'm on my uh, social media platform and I have on a digital dress that looks really nice and I can keep changing it and I have a friend who has no idea about Web3, they will still be attracted to that. And that might be their like onboarding sort of path, kind of how they're gonna get in the space or you know, start adapting that. And I think that it will really uh, reduce or it, it could eventually potentially solve this fast fashion situation. For now, I wanna thank you so much, Domingo. Like Joy said, you brought your vibrant um, energy, very insightful. Are very thoughtful and um, I would say responses to our questions and we thank you so much for your time and we thank you all for being a part of this episode of New Farm and uh, if you want to get more involved in our community make sure to follow us on our social platforms IG is newcoin.nco and our website is newcoin.org you should also totally join our discord community and continue the conversation with us and we will be sure to put all of our links as well as Domingo's links in the description below. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.